Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are going to be talking about one of Yield Max's big competitors. So, you know, as we know, Tesla is the biggest fund that Yield Max currently has. And they have a pretty big yield. It's usually pretty consistent too at 53%. But as we know, Tesla has been on a decline as they have reverse split before. So this is their biggest fund here at $685 million dollars and assets and once you know these individual cover call strategies like yield max does starts getting this much assets like 685 million is a lot in assets it's going to start attracting a lot of competitors into this space so that's a good thing because obviously you know me i don't like that 0.99 percent gross expense ratio so if more competitors start coming in Maybe we can see some pressure on yield max to lower that expense fee. So in this video, we are going to be covering one of their competitors here, Curve. They have about six individual tickers here that they run covered calls on. However, these funds are pretty similar here. So this is the Tesla one. Uh, it's about half the yield of yield max's version Tesla. The difference is, is that they're not running weekly calls. They're running monthly calls. As we can see here, that is actually more than a month out. That is a June 21st, 215 call for Tesla. But they, the fund is pretty much similar though. As you can see, they, uh, they run a synthetic and they also have their treasuries and money market funds. So we're going to be taking a look comparing... Like, is this fund manager doing better than the yield max fund manager? Because we got to know, you know, or at least I got to know. Also, another key thing to note here is if you look at the expense ratio, it is actually higher. If you look at the gross expense ratio, it's 1.15%. So that is about 0.16 or 16 basis points higher than the yield max ones. So if we're giving them more of a fee, I expect them to do better. So let's take a look at their performance and we're going to be comparing them against the yield max version. So they got uh, Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, and the Tesla one, which we are looking at right now. So let's take a look and I'll share my thoughts, opinions, you know, maybe curve is better than yield max. Let's, let's take a look. So we're going to be looking at total return, but first I just wanted to see how their share price is doing. So it looks like if we go max here, they started at 25 bucks. Now they're at 20, all while paying a 25% dividend. So it looks like their inception here was October 27th. So let's take a look at Tesla here. One second. Okay, so Tesla that is actually not my holdings a total gain of minus 86 percent. i don't know what's going on with yahoo finance but as we can see it looks like if we go to october 27th tesla was at 22.74 and now they're at 15. so they did you know drop about the same as the curve one all while paying a little bit higher of a dividend so let's take a look at the total return because at the end of the day, that's what matters when it comes to these funds. All right, here we are on total return. And as we can see, it is very, very close there. Um, but it does say Tesla is doing better. But that is, you know, really close to call there. Looks like at the beginning, Tes Tespu, I don't know how to abbreviate that, TSLP, um was doing better than tesla but then i don't know what happened there huge drop i think uh tesla was probably rolling down those calls because tesla sells them weekly and it appears you know i don't follow the curve funds closely but tesla makes multiple trades throughout the week so that's good that they can roll down their calls collect more premium etc i'm not sure if curve does that so let's take a look at the next one here we got Ams, Ams, okay, it's twelve point seven four percent yield on this one. 
Um, so it, what I'm noticing from these funds is the yields are much lower. So uh, that means the stock price is going to be more stable. But even for the AMSI one, the AMSI one is still going up despite paying a 30% dividend. It's insane. So we'll we'll compare those, see which one is doing better. As you can see, Amzi just paid a huge dividend last month. 50% yield on that one. Crazy. So if you look at the total return, Amzi is actually beating AMZ, AMZP by 2%. So it looks like, you know, there's periods where the curve version is outperforming by quite a bit. And then uh, at the end there, I don't know what happened. That little spike right there, Amzi just took over next up is the netflix version uh they're yielding 18 percent, so that's one of their higher yielding ones i don't know the netflix one for yield max seems to be doing really good so this one should be interesting and i'm not trying to spoil the end of the video but curve beats one of these funds massively like massively i don't know what happened but we'll take a look at it so there's Netflix. They always they are they're always yielding a lot here at sixty nine percent. I don't know. I always predict this one wrong. This one, I think, is a very underrated yield max ETF. So now we're looking at it, basically a tie, basically a tie. It's not even a like I can't even see the difference there. So these ones are pretty much you know spot on right here. Uh, we're actually going to take a look at the Netflix versus NFLP's price because I'd assume NFLP's price would be higher since they're paying less of it, less of a yield. So let's take a look at that. So here is NFLP and the share price is up 22% for all time. So now let's take a look at Netflix here. I'm guessing it's going to be down obviously because it's under $20. So they are down 15.95% all time. So it really depends what you want here. Um, I would honestly think if I held these in a taxable account, I don't hold mine in a taxable account, but if I did curve, I don't know. I don't want to say this officially, but it might be more tax efficient because you're not getting taxed on that yield all the time. You know what I'm saying here? Like, uh, you're only selling or you're only paying taxes when you sell the actual stock, but you're still getting a 16% or whatever yield. So that could be something to look out for. So now we got MSFY, which is their Microsoft version. It looks like they have a lot of safe, you know, stocks for their picks. The only really volatile one that they have is the Tesla one. So that could be a reason why the distributions are a bit lower on these ones here. But when you look at the yield max one, the yield max is 32%. So we could kind of see this as a situation where yield max is basically giving you everything. They're like, all right, you can do whatever you want with the money. Here's your check. And curve is kind of keeping that into the stock price. So it's the stock price isn't really going down. That's basically what I'm taking from this. So if we look at the total return here, you know, it's actually weird. I think MSFY is the yield max version, but it's actually MSFO and they're outperforming by about 6%. So obviously you would want the yield max version here. Next up, GUI. So GUI is paying a 45% yield but usually it's like 20%, 30%. It, Google just had a really good month. Now let's look at Goop. I like that one. I can actually abbreviate that one, Goop. Goop is paying 13%. And maybe when these distribution rates are lower, they can be more consistent too because Yieldmax's version, you know, it flies around all the time. You know, it's like Apple, you will pay 20%, then I'll pay 12%, and then I'll pay 36%. So maybe that's what they're trying to go for here too with uh, Curve, trying to keep the rates lower so they can be more consistent every month. 
let's take a look at this total return and this total return is crazy guys like i don't know what happened with yield max here look at this curve is outperforming by what is that 29 percent 19 percent wow i don't know what the heck happened with yield max on this one i remember covering uh you know gooey every single week and i would just be shaking my head at some of the calls they were making uh we would get capped out way too hard sometimes and then we wouldn't capture all the upside you know it's just really bad so that's a way we're selling long out of the money calls like curve does can sometimes work better than selling weekly calls where you have to put them closer to being in the money like yield max does especially with google because google is not as volatile so they really got to put those calls really close to being in the money to collect any sort of like meaningful premium but that is just crazy goop outperforming gooey by 19 percent. wow okay now last but not least we got the apple one aapy paying 11 and percent distribution rate so i also, as we can see here, right on the fact sheet, it says balance between income versus capital appreciation potential in certain rising market. So again, I'm going to say this one more time. This is one of the bad things about the yield max one is that they pay out, you know, most of their call income and they don't keep any of that in the share price. Even if that synthetic is going down in value, they don't usually hold a lot in the reserve tank so what that means basically is for next month you're rocking at a lower share price and that means you know you're gonna get less dividends because the yield it might be the same but it's gonna be the same share price so that's you really don't want to see your yield max ETFs go down especially you know for me I don't like seeing them go below 20 I don't know that's just their initial offering price. They sell at 20 when they first launch. But yeah, if it gets if it starts getting to the 15s, then your payments really start to go down with yield max. <coughs> so I think that could be another pro for curve. However, you are getting a lower distribution rate to start off with. And I know a lot of people buy these, you know, for income and they want that income now. And you can negate like that sh declining share price if you simply just reinvest your dividends as well you know because you'll have more shares so so it all depends what you do so let's take a look at the apply one apply was 24 percent for the last month yeah usually they're around 24 percent, but i have seen i have seen them as low as 12 percent before but if we look at the total return it looks fairly close, but the yield max version is again winning there. So it appears, you know, yield max outperforms curve um, for all the ETFs. And usually when they outperform, it's very little. But uh, except for that Google one, curve absolutely destroyed yield max with that Google one. I don't know what happened there. Um, a lot of bad calls, I guess, by Yield Max on that one. All right, to wrap it up here, I'm just going to say my thoughts and opinions on this. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just researching these ETFs. So what do I think of these? I think, you know, it's great that more competition is coming into this high yielding space. And I love the single ticker covered call strategies. So these are all great. I hope they come out with some new ones that Yield Max doesn't have. Um, if I didn't have room in my non taxable accounts and I wanted to run strategies like this in a taxable account, I'd probably actually choose these over Yield Max just for tax reasons. I'd have to research more into that. But if I'm only paying taxes on that 12% yield, then it'd obviously be better than paying taxes on a 40% yield. But in the end, 
the tax would be the same because I'd still sell the shares and then I'd pay tax on that capital gains. So I guess in the end, it really doesn't matter. But I think Goop outperforming Yieldbacks is crazy too, but the rest, it's really minuscule. You know, these are pretty much the same thing as yield max. One thing that would really set them apart though is lowering this net expense ratio right here 0.99%. Way too high. If you want to set yourself apart and you want to bring new money into these funds, you lower that expense ratio if possible. Like, obviously, I know Curve has to make a profit. There's cost to running these ETFs. But that's how businesses work. You got to undercut the other business to bring more business to your business. You know what I mean? So I'd even take 0.6%. I think that'd be a really smart move. But, you know, I'm not I'm not a owner of Curve. I, uh, yeah, I'm not in it an advisor for them or anything but that that's what i would do if if i own curve so do you guys own curve make sure you smash that like button subscribe and i'll see you in the next video